The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. The nephron is a single blood filtration and reabsorption unit. It is composed of a tubule containing the filtered substances and surrounding capillaries for reabsorption to take place. Finally, regulatory cells from the juxtaglomerular apparatus control some aspects of the filtration process. The nephron begins and ends in the renal cortex with the middle region dipping into the med medullary pyramids. The kidney is where long-term electrolyte and acid-base balance regulations are made. Water and solutes are retained or excreted in amounts depending on the physiological needs of the person at the time. The filtration process begins with the filtration of most of the plasma solutes from the blood. Large molecules and proteins such as red blood cells, plasma proteins, hormones, etc. remain in the blood and do not get filtered. Solutes such as glucose and electrolytes are returned to the blood by reabsorption. However, if there was an excess of some certain electrolytes or other substances, then they will not all be returned to the blood and allowed to stay within the nephron and be excreted via the urine. Any substance that was not filtered initially from the blood can be pumped into the filtrate via secretion. The nephron is made up of tubules and surrounding vasculature. The components are split between the renal cortex and the medullary pyramids in the renal medulla. The tubule components begin with the Bowman's capsule in the renal cortex. The Bowman's capsule is where solutes and water are removed from the blood. The filtered substances in the tubules are now called filtrate. The filtrate enters the proximal convoluted tubules where most of the reabsorption takes place. The proximal convoluted tubule has microvilli inside the lumen to increase surface area for reabsorption. The lupa henle is the portion of the nephron that enters the medullary pyramids. It is shaped like a U with a descending limb and an ascending limb. The shape of the lupa henle is important to create a concentration gradient to increase the reabsorption of water. The distal convoluted tubule is the final location for reabsorption. The distal convoluted tubule is also where hormones such as aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone will target to retain more sodium and water. The filtrate then flows into the collecting duct where the urine can be taken to the calyces, then the renal pelvis and out of the kidney to the ureters. The vasculature surrounding the nephron stems off the interlobular artery. The afferent arterial branches off the interlobular artery and leads to the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a tangled capillary bed within the Bowman's capsule. The glomerulus is where the water and solutes are filtered out of the blood and into the Bowman's capsule. The efferent arterial takes blood away from the Bowman's capsule. The blood in the efferent arterial is much thicker, more sludge-like, conceptually speaking, than the incoming afferent arterial since the efferent arterial has significantly less water in it. The efferent arterial leads to the peritubular capillaries which surround both the proximal and distal convoluted tubules which are located in the renal cortex. The capillary surrounding the loop of Henle in the medulla is the vasa recta. The blood from these capillary beds enter the interlobular vein to be eventually returned to the general circulation. The process of filtration occurs when solutes and water move out of the specialized capillary network of the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. The fenestrated capillaries of the glomerulus have larger pores than regular capillaries to allow more substances to escape the blood and enter the tubular network with the balance of hydrostatic and osmotic pressure gradients to form filtrate. Examples of substances filtered are small solutes such as ions, ammonia, and other metabolic wastes, or nutrients such as glucose, free fatty acids, and larger waste molecules like bilirubin and urea. The average glomerular filtration rate per day is an incredible 180 liters or 47 and a half gallons. There are a number of factors that control how much is being filtered at any given time. There must always be enough pressure in the glomerulus to push the fluid out and through the capillary wall. If the blood pressure is too low, an auto-regulation mechanism happens, which dilates the incoming afferent arterial and constricts the outgoing efferent arterial. 
This increases the pressure in the glomerulus so that enough fluid and solutes can be pushed out into the Bowman's capsule. If the blood pressure remains low, the baroreceptors or pressure sensors in the afferent arterial are activated, causing the release of the hormone renin. Renin will go through a number of conversions to finally become angiotensin II, which increases blood pressure all over the body by constricting arterioles. In the kidney, this increases the driving pressure of blood into the glomerulus and constricts the exiting efferent arteriole, increasing glomerular pressure so more fluid can be pushed through the capillary walls. Other mechanisms to increase the driving pressure for filtration is activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which can constrict the afferent arteriole, increasing the velocity of flow, like the effect of putting your thumb over the end of the hose to make it spray. Most of the filtrate is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubules. Some solutes are actively pumped back into the blood or peritubular capillaries, creating a concentration or electrochemical gradient to pull other solutes into the blood as well, making the process of reabsorption use as little energy as possible. Sodium, a positive ion, is actively pumped into the peritubular capillaries, which draws negatively charged ion solutes, such as chloride and phosphate, as well as water with it. Glucose is brought back into the blood by the sodium co-transporter, which is a modified active transport mechanism, which uses energy from the sodium concentration gradient to move the glucose mo molecule out of the filtrate, moving it up its concentration gradient. All the glucose should be returned to the blood. If the blood glucose level exceeds 150 to 180 milligrams per deciliter, the glucose threshold amount, then the excess amount of glucose will remain in the filtrate and be excreted via the urine. This condition is common in diabetes mellitus and some other conditions. For amino acids, the renal threshold is 65 milligrams per deciliter, which means that when the amino acid concentration of the blood exceeds 65 milligrams per deciliter, the excess amino acids will be allowed to remain in the urine. Water-soluble vitamins have a low renal threshold. Although we need vitamins, any tiny bit over what we actually need will be excreted via the urine. Nephrons that have a glomerulus and proximal convoluted tubule close to the medulla are called juxtamedullary nephrons. These nephrons have a loop of Henle that is entirely in the medullary pyramids and surrounded by a capillary network called vasa recta. The U-turn arrangement of the loop creates a counter-current flow which concentrates the solutes in the medulla, increasing water reabsorption. The descending limb of the loop of Henle is made of simple squamous epithelial tissue for free diffusion of solutes, while the ascending limb is made of simple cuboidal epithelial tissue for active transport of solutes, concentrating the area between the two. Urea is also reabsorbed by the loop of Henle. The distal convoluted tubule is the last region for water and sodium reabsorption. It is the region that blood volume hormones target. Antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary gland increases the reabsorption of water so less is lost in the urine. Aldosterone from the adrenal cortex increases sodium and therefore water reabsorption. Atrial natriuretic hormone from the right atrium actually reduces blood volume by promoting sodium and therefore water loss, which also decreases blood pressure. In the distal convoluted tubule, secretion of unwanted substances from the blood into the filtrate also occur. Potassium is secreted, which promotes the reabsorption of sodium and therefore water. Aldosterone increases the potassium secretion. Hydrogen ions and ammonia are secreted to maintain blood pH levels for long-term acid-base balance. Sodium may be secreted in the presence of atrial natriuretic hormone causing an associated loss in water, which effectively reduces blood volume and blood pressure. Larger molecules that are secreted from the blood into the filtrate for removal via urine are drug metabolites, urea, uric acid, etc. The filtrate is emptied into the collecting duct. A single collecting duct receives filtrates from many other nephrons as well. 
the collecting duct is within the medullary pyramids and drip out the filtrate from the papillary duct at the bottom of the pyramids. The fluid enters the minor calyx and can now be called urine. The minor calyces drain into the major calyces, then the renal pelvis, and out the ureter.